Um, the whole of the Buddha Dharma, I would say, I decided to start, uh, depends in terms of the possibility of an extraordinary person, an extra which means an extraordinary world, extraordinary world. And, uh, you know, Buddha is glossed in the Sanskrit and ancient commentaries as coming from Vibuddha and Prabuddha. And the Vibuddha part means the awakening from the sleep of ignorance. But the Prabuddha part means expanding awareness to omniscience, Sarvajna. And I don't think there's any difference between the Theravada or the, you know, the Nikaya Buddhism and Mahayana Buddhism about that. And therefore, there has to be the possibility in mind that uh, one can achieve a, a kind of awareness that is not the ordinary kind of awareness. And therefore, a person who takes refuge in Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha is someone who is taking refuge initially, since they don't have that kind of awareness initially, in the possibility of that awareness. And the possibility of their attaining it, the possibility of someone previously having attained it, and therefore the Dharma taught by that person, and the, and the reality, both being meanings of Dharma, revealed by that person, is this extraordinary reality, not the ordinary reality of suffering. The ordinary reality is the misery that we're all very familiar with. It was not, in fact, Buddha's discovery. It's, uh, it's very much downgrading Buddha if you think that what he discovered was suffering. Any idiot can discover suffering. <laughs> Just walk into the pillar there and bump your head and you're gone. That's really easy to do. And uh, I'm an expert in stubbing my toe, and, and that's really a very, very quick introduction to the first noble truth. And, uh, but the discovery that there's freedom from suffering, that is really difficult because that is preposterous. Nobody believes in that. No ordinary person in no ordinary culture believes in that. In Buddha's culture, it was just the same in ancient Indian culture. And, when, and Siddhartha, when he left his palace, he told his dad, said, okay, son, you got a son now, and now, therefore, it's my turn to go on vacation. I'm going over with the Roshi over there at the Montague, and I'm going to be happy. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the Buddha said, no, you're not dead. You'll have to hang out until your grandson gets old enough, or maybe not even then, because I'm going on vacation, the Buddha said. <laughs> I'm not just sitting in this throne, in this or or presiding over this ordinary world where people suffer. I'm going to find an answer to suffering. There must be one. And uh, everybody told him, his father, all the psychiatrists his father sent to him, <laughs> once they locked him up, you know, all the Brahmins, they said, there, that's ridiculous, you know, you just be king and defend against the people and work on the economy and, and, for, and fund the priests who will go and get people to resign themselves to suffering. 